den fellow pedal nerds. And no dillers and no deans, no dazzles. Nee. We're looking at different kind of pedals today. We're looking at an amp switcher from Orange. You should probably have two Orange amps for that. Will that make sense? No. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, never played them. So, and a two-stroke, a booster, but Orange likes tone sculpting mayhem possibilities. And for a booster, this has a lot. Usually boosters, I boost this much, low and high. No, this has semi, semi-pyramid, blah. This has semi-pyramid. The two-stroke by Orange has semi-parametric mid-control. Or actually, uh, frequency control, not mid-control. High and low. <clears throat> the two-stroke by Orange has semi-parametric high and low controls. Or in a different country, I don't know which one, semi-parametric. Semi? Semi? I don't know. Uh, so, set up. Uh, Maybach Telemann and or Hartung Embrace Wanted 57 going into the Orange two-stroke. As a booster. It's not an overdrive, it's a booster. That's going into the amp detonator, why ever that is called amp detonator, I have no idea. Um, which is a buffered. If you want to know about buffering, there's tons of videos about, about it. Pretty much what it means is that the signal that's going on, going out, has been changed in its homage. Uh, which will result in you being able to have longer cable runs. So a lot of pedals behind each other with little patch cables and all this. Uh, means that you don't have a, hi- a high quality signal coming out at the end. So putting a buffer in front of it means 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 it means at the end. I'm Scottish. I don't know. It means at the end you've got a better signal. Um, you want a buffer if you have a lot of pedals. Be careful with wahs and certain types of fuzzes. They don't like buffers. Um, and apparently the buffer cannot be switched off. There's no switch for it. That has two outputs. You can go A and B. I'm thinking this is B. A, B, and you can have both amps at the same time. Usually in amp switcher like this, the problems could be hum and buzz and grounding issues. In the few times that I've used it, I've had none of these. It just it just works. There's a phase switch because those, if you have both of them at the same time, they are vibrating at the same time. So there's a, uh, there's your waveform, your signal, and if something in one line, maybe a longer cable, or in the tiniest way, those signals get out of phase, you could have a hollow kind of a signal. Might be sound that you want. Usually, a phasing issue doesn't sound good, so you can phase reverse one of the signals, hopefully resulting in a better signal. Um, out of uh, number A, which should be our red signal. Yep. Um, no, green. Uh, red is B. Okay, is it? Yes. So our red is our B signal. That's going into a Joyo Beale Street 12 watt 6v6 loaded uh, in the power amp. Uh, tweed amp, relatively clean right now, going into a Torpedo Studio with a 412 emulation. Um, our green signal is going back there into the La Boga Alligator 50 watt amp, um, EL84 loaded, uh, cranked up nicely. <laughs> No, the green signal. God damn it! That's a good ass amp. That's actually going into Torpedo uh, uh, Life, also with the same speaker that the other one has. It's the welcome patch. It's patch number one. I never got past that one because it's a good one. Um, <laughs> no, I have. And you can see the fucking amp switcher fucking switches amps. And it does it beautifully. You want to hear both, huh? Yeah. Thank you. 
can hear that with the face which pushed, it's a little bit phasey. So we're not going to have that. <laughs> Big ass sound, pedal does its job. So, we're gonna go on a, the clean amp, the Beale Street. And with everything centered, let me show you the controls on the two stroke. Uh, we got a foot switch, duh. The roll bar to protect the knobs. Um, which again, just like on the back's banjita, bangita, uh, difficult to manipulate the ones that are close to the roba. Maybe reduce the height. I don't know what you can do. Maybe just don't have a roba. It's kind of neat, but I don't know, I'm not sure it's necessary. So we have the high control with boost and cut, boost and cut, left and right. And we have a frequency control which goes from 850 hertz to 8.5k, which is already the high end. We have a low control with cut and boost, which goes from 120 hertz to 1.2k. So a lot of control in those two ranges. So we're going to listen to it, everything up. Congo? Maybe you could do a little bit more of, you know, shut the fuck up. X is freaking out. That means Congo is freaking out. She doesn't know what she's freaking about. Freaking out about because X is just freaking out about something. So she's like, there's got to be something to bark about. Thank you. Yeah, I love you too. How much oil Congo? How much oil you give it is the boost. Beautiful. So let's play with the high frequency control. Eight fifty is just the right frequency for creaminess. Teller with telly with a uh, tea style. I'm sorry. Very, very clearly, if your amp does not have enough high frequency content, this can help it. Let's see if we can actually not boost it that much and get a spikier clean sound. So you can actually use this kind of E like an EQ. What do you mean kind of? Huh? Let's 
Let's take some stuff out. So it gets duller when you take away the high end. That's weird. Hmm. Very, very usable and flexible tonal controllage. We're checking out the low end. very crazy but why not possibilities here with the booster. Great. Let's push an amp that's already been cranked. Let's push that with humbuckers. Beautiful Frank Hartung guitars. Wanted to embrace 57. <laughs> That La Borga amp is not too shabby. bit more but we can go more <laughs> to be a little bit more creamy. I'm gonna actually use my low control for that because I want it also more bitey. <laughs> Holy fuck! 
That will cut through ever. That's wow! <laughs> Holy, um, very very nice tone sculpting option there. <laughs> Making it leaner in the bass now. the options. Now let's hear that with both amps. <laughs> phase issues on both of them. This would be nice if this was actually a continuous phase knob where I could really dial in the perfect position. <laughs> Bottom line, holy crap, I mean, the two-stroke is without a question uh, the most flexible booster I've ever had. Uh, I love the Focus from VFE, which is kind of takes the high end and the low end out as much as you want and focuses on the mids, which you could do with this, but those semi-parametric controls for low and high, you've seen... Uh, you could get, it's not really a booster, it's an EQ booster, but not really because it's actually sh kicking your amp with a certain set of frequencies. So it's not an EQ. An EQ you could use post-distortion as well. This is, this is just brilliant. From getting more brilliance in your cleans to dialing in the fucking perfect lead tone. I mean, if I had delay on this, I would still be sitting here like... You know? I, wow. Um, again, the roll bar. Yeah, whatever. Uh, high build quality. Mega solid. I think, I think, the two-stroke clock's in at, what, 160 or something? Yes, for booster, well, <laughs> the Keeley booster is probably as much or more. Um, this can actually do shit. This doesn't just kick your amp and that's it. This kicks your amp square in the nuts, and you can do a lot with that sound. I mean, if your bass sound, and the Leboga has a great bass sound, uh, your basic, not bass, no, no, if your basic sound is kick-ass, 
you can sculpt it and keep that character. Wow. Um... And, well, the Amp Detonator, do we need an A-B switch for this much money? Because I also think it's like 150 to 170, something like this. Um, well, look at Lele. The people that want serious amp switching or A-B switching buy Lele, and that's as expensive. It's good shit, but expensive. So, yes, this is not cheap for a tool that makes no sound. I bought the Morley Tripler to do just that, um, and it's also that much. It has a third output, but whatever. Um... It does a great job. It's buffered. And um, so for long cable runs, that's fine. You very likely have this behind your pedals or in front of two pedal boards. Mm, options are endless. The face switch is nice. You could be lucky and have the perfect setting in either one of them. I would actually like to have a face dial and be able to move one of the two around a bit so that I can fit get that perfect setting. I don't think any of those has that. Any, any switch has that. So AB and both, nice. I'm definitely going to use that when I use two amps in my setups like I just did, because it's smaller than the tripler and uh, does a more reliable job without hum and bum and all that stuff. So I can recommend the pedals whether you want to fork over the money, that's up to you. I want to thank Orange for sending these out. I want to thank you, if you haven't, you bastard, uh, for hitting subscribe below. Um, as far as there are links to Toman, they will be under the video. So if you click those links, you actually support me because uh, that money goes straight to Leslie to buy food for the stupid buggy dogs. Well, me, 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 there's someone outside, me, 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 whatever. Um, so uh, that's it for me. Thanks for watching and see you on the... Still unknown flippity flop.